Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez. Welcome to my Sync Sports live shoot with our athlete Sophie. Unfortunately, you know, this was supposed to be an in-person workshop, obviously. And we're here at uh, these Little League baseball fields on purpose because I wanted to show how to take a location that's not exactly ideal and turn it into what you want. Because, you know, I, I've had situations happen where I, I, I'll go to the athlete's gym or their field or whatever, and maybe the parent didn't check ahead of time, or maybe there was something unexpected that happened, there's a team practicing, or we couldn't get in or whatever, you know, something that, you know, causes us to have to go to a different spot. I always try to shoot that day no matter what, even if we have to change locations to a spot like this, it's not gonna be ideal, but it's your job to deliver great images no matter what. So you've got to figure out how to work around that. I picked this this little league this little league baseball park on purpose because it's not really an ideal location. There's there's obviously grass. Soccer's played on grass. There's lights. So there are some there's some bleachers. There's elements that we can use, but I'm gonna have to work around some things. For example, like there's all these there's all these this fencing that wouldn't be on a normal soccer field. So I'm gonna use depth of field to my advantage probably to blur that out. I'm probably gonna shoot at f2.8, f4 a lot. We're gonna, I'm probably gonna have, have her on the bleachers quite a bit, shoot up so I can kind of get the sky behind her and you know eliminate a lot of this clutter down here, all the, these buildings and everything that we don't want in the background. We can use these lights. Um, I was able to get somebody to turn the lights on, which you know you may or, not, may or may not be able to do, but even if you couldn't get the lights turned on in a place like this, you could still use the sky and, you know, and shoot with just that behind her. We can probably use this fence, even though that's not really, something that would necessarily be at a soccer field it may or may not but we can but you know you got you got to take what you can get when you're in a situation like this and try to give them you know the best images possible no matter what so um we're going to try a few different scenarios and then at the end i'm going to try an action shot just to, just to make sure that you know it doesn't eat up too much time because you have to be careful on a shoot like this because people want those really cool action shots that's what catches everybody's eye but if you if, if you're not careful, it, they're hard to pull off sometimes, so you can spend way too much time trying to do one shot and not get enough of everything else. So I'll take some posed, safe stuff first, make sure that I get enough deliverable shots that she's gonna like, and then at the end, we'll try something more risky. Okay, so the first, um, the first setup, the most obvious one to me is the bleachers, um, you know, because this, this could be used for pretty much any sport. So it's gonna accomplish a couple things. Number one, it's relevant, and number two, because we want to eliminate some of the clutter in the background it's going to work really well because i can get below her and shoot up so we can get the sky we could probably get some of those lights behind her and you know i can do a couple different things here I, well a few really we can do standing like she's doing now um, we can do one light and you know if you only have one light that's fine but then also because we have the lights on and also you know the, the sun it's it's kind of behind the clouds now but it, it but it was out earlier you can add a second light as a rim to mimic either the stadium lights or the sun, either one. Um, so we can do sitting here straight on, we can do standing, uh, we can do one light, two light, and then, so we got sitting, standing, and then we can also, I can move over to the side, which I'm shooting with a Nikon D850, and I've got a 24 to 70 right now, which is good because I've got this fence behind me so I can't, I can't back up a ton. And anytime you shoot really wide like that, the, the background, it's you're, even if you shoot at 2.8, it's, it's going to be blurry, but not as much as if you compress it with like 200 millimeter lens, which is, I have my 70 to 200 here also. Um, the three lenses that I typically shoot with are 14, 24, 24 to 70, and 70 to 200. Um, and a lot of times, honestly, I'll just go like really wide, like 24, and then the 70 to 200 because it's two d totally different looks. Um, and I can do the same shot with with those two different lenses and it, and it won't look anywhere near the same. Um, Cause one will be wide obviously and then one will be a lot more compressed like I said, which would let us, you know, if I'm shooting wide, I can shoot up kind of to get the sky behind her. But compress it, if I compress it, then I can blur out a lot of stuff in the background that we don't want, um, that's not relevant to soccer. So, so I'm gonna shoot this first, um, a little bit wider and then, you know, couple different poses and then I'm gonna move over to the side then she, she can stay in the exact same place I don't even have to move my lights I can actually I'll just move myself over to the side she can look straight she can look at me do a couple different angles like that I can stand up I can sit down um, and then we've got lights on back here too so we can get those blurred out behind her and that should look really nice <laughs>
Okay, so for the action shot, I want to shoot at wide angle. Um, I, I do compress action shots sometimes. It kind of depends on the situation, but I, I, more times than not, I shoot at wide angle just to make it more dramatic. Um, I've got my 14 to 24 on. Um, I typically try to stay at 24. Um, you know, sometimes I do go a little bit wider, but you get quite a bit of distortion at 14, even though this lens doesn't have, for as wide as it is, it doesn't have a ton of distortion, but so I try to stay at 24 as much as possible. Um, so in this park, the, the best case scenario is this spot right here. And that is because I have a little bit of an open area. There are trees back there that are far enough away that when I shoot wide, you know, obviously anything that you're closer to is gonna get distorted. So even though the tree line right now looks fairly high, when I lay down and shoot at, you know, whatever millimeter doesn't really matter because it, it's gonna distort it enough where it's gonna get it out. Of, it's gonna get it further, far enough back in the frame that it's gonna be below her. And so that's, that's the key. I, if I shoot on my knees or standing up, I'm gonna get way too much of the grass. So I'm gonna lay down, I'm gonna get as close to the ground as possible. That They have these things called uh, right angle viewfinders that can help with that situation. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna have to kind of like turn my head sideways. Um, but so what, so what we do is, or what I typically do is I'll have her, I may have her like make a little divot so she knows what spot to stay in. And I'm just gonna have her repeat this, whatever the, whatever the action is over and over and over. Um, at least probably five to ten times in a row depending on how well you know it's going um, she's gonna do a rainbow so you know it, it it's kind of hit or miss I mean we're gonna do I don't know probably 20 to 30 at least um, because what that does is when they do that many in a row the athlete it, it they stop thinking about getting their picture made and they just start they're going in their natural you know state of mind whenever they're practicing or whatever so they stop thinking about that and then that, that the, the movement comes becomes more natural and when you repeat it that many times, you're more likely to get a good shot. If you do one or two takes at a time and then stop and look, it, it typically, I don't have as much, as much success that way. So um, we've got two lights, the lighting setup. I've got, I've got a long throw reflector on the back um, as a rim light. So it's gonna be, now the key with this is because I'm shooting wide, it's a lot of stuff that's in the background could be pulled into the frame. Whereas if I'm shooting, you know, compressed, it's not, it wouldn't be. But because I'm going to be, you know, 14 to 24, that light has got to be pretty far back so that it stays out of the frame. You can get it in the frame and Photoshop it out, but I try not to do that whenever possible, just because that, that's more work in post. You know, it's, it's just easier to get it right in camera. So we've got that long throw reflector back. We've got it pushed back. I am shooting high speed sync. Um, I am at one sixteen hundredth of a second f 6.3. ISO 400. Now, typically, I'd want to shoot at ISO 100, but because it is a little bit later in the day, the sun the sun is back behind these clouds. It's not set yet, but there's not a lot a ton of ambient, so our settings aren't aren't, aren't going to be like if it was the middle of the day, we might be at one four thousandth, one eight thousandth of a second. I've got these FJ 400 strobes, so that I can do high speed sync. I can go up as fast as I want to on the shutter speed. Um, whenever I'm doing an action shot, I don't want to shoot too shallow because I want to try to get as much in focus as possible. It's, it's harder when they're moving that fast, like if you're shooting at 2.8, it's kind of tough to nail the focus every single time. So I'm, I am at f8 just to make sure and just to make sure that I, I have more of a chance of getting in focus. Um, I want to have the, the focus point in the middle of the frame at the top probably so I can get it right on her face. And so the second light is we've got a beauty dish here. Um, and normally a lot of times with action shots, I would have two long throws like that, but because because a lot of times I'm in the it's in the middle of the day I'm having to overpower the sun. When you have a, a reflector like that, you get a lot more power out of your light. The Beauty Dish with the, this one has a white interior. Um, it's not going to give you as high of output, but because it's so light in the day, there's not a ton of ambient that's going to allow me to do that. Now I, I want to do that when when possible because it, the light's softer with the Beauty Dish than the long throws. But with an action shot, it's not as important to have soft light as it would be if it was just a regular portrait. So. Because of that, we've got that instead of the two long throws. So it's gonna be a little bit more pleasing light on her face probably. Um, so I've got, when she does the rainbow, she's gonna be turned back looking this direction. So I want the, the key light there and then the rim light on the other side. So um, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna look at all the frames as I'm taking them. I'm just gonna do several in a row and then see what we have after that. And if 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 the athlete's not doing exactly what you need them to do, it's, it's a good idea to show them the back of the camera so they can, so rather than you trying to explain it, you can actually show them what they're doing and what they, so they can visualize what they might need to change or what they're doing right.
Okay, so we're wrapped up. I've got several different frames um, of her action shot. I always think it's a good idea to try different focal lengths. You know, I moved myself, I got closer to her, I, I pulled back, um, I had the camera up higher, tried it down low. We, we tried it, I showed her some on the back of the camera so she could see what she was doing. Um, her hair was going in front of her face on a few, her arm was up blocking the light. So, but like I said before, showing her that actually on the camera allowed her to visualize it better so she could fix what she was doing rather than me just having to explain it to her. Um, she changed a few things, but she kicked the ball up faster, slower. So we got a lot of different scenarios in there because honestly, it's, it's almost inevitable. Every time I do a shot like this, the one that I end up picking isn't, it usually isn't the one that I think is the best when we're actually taking the pictures. That, for some reason, they just look different on the back of the camera than they do when you get them on the computer. So you wanna make sure you got your bases covered and try as many different things as possible. And you know, that way you have options when you get into post later. Okay, so now we're gonna go into post. I'm gonna show you how I pick my photos in Photo Mechanic. I'm gonna bring them into Lightroom and color correct and tone them. And then we're gonna pick out a few of our favorites and bring them into Photoshop and actually retouch them.